look at the size of this box. Now, quite often Amiga games came in these large boxes. So now, if you're collecting games, or if you're just, um, you know, buying them to play them, um, they do take up quite a lot of space. You can see, actually, up here. Uh, I've got a box full of Amiga games and you can only fit about what, about 12 in one box um, just as a comparison this is a, a Mega Drive case and uh, SNES boxes are about the same size as that oh. PC Engine games come in nice little uh, CD uh, CD style cases. So yeah, I mean, I suppose it's nice. It looks nice on your shelf if you've got them on display. Uh, but if you don't have a lot of space, then it can be a bit of a problem. Let's have a look at this. My copy doesn't actually work, and it wouldn't work anyway on my um, Amiga 1200. Um, so I've got a, <laughs> an AGA fix version that I've downloaded. But that's what the original discs look like. And actually interestingly, um, this is a French game, so the French instructions are the first ones you come across. Alright, so Let's have a look at Jim Power. So if I try one of the actual discs. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't sound very good, does it? So you can see here, uh, it doesn't actually even recognise um, what the game is. Uh, so let's try one of these downloaded discs. So there's a little message from the, uh, the team that cracked it. So thank you very much, uh, Galahad of Dual Crew and Shining. And of course this is a trainer, um, so I'll turn all the cheats off, uh, because it's a cracked version. And yeah, for those that know about this game uh, they will know that the music is really good so what I'll do for this title screen is uh, upload the music separately because it's worth doing bit of an ugly title screen though there's lots of colors but it's a bit Garish. And straight in. So you don't have a, a chance to appreciate the graphics because 
just like that, any mistake and you are dead. So don't get hit, be very very careful, like when jumping on these platforms, be very careful and be careful about enemies um, running at you from the right. So there's Jim, Jim's main sprite. Uh, he looks really weird actually. That sprite looks really kind of goofy. Um, but he is supposed to be a um, I don't know really he's supposed to be some sort of um, famous superhero and there is a charge up shot as well And as you go along you do pick up power-ups for your weapon uh, but there isn't actually strangely there's not a variety of weapons you, you do sort of pick them up in a kind of linear way and uh, you can't actually I don't think you can miss any I don't think the gems are useful for very much It doesn't scroll up and down either, so the levels are very, very basic, very linear, and um, they are very long as well. So most of this video will just be the first level, and um, it's actually quite difficult to just get past the first level. I mean the game itself isn't actually that difficult but it's like you take two steps and then you have to avoid something else and you miss time one jump you touch some spikes um, you miss misjudge something else and you run into a bad guy and there's a picture of Jim there from the PC engine version uh, and this is the first boss, and uh, strangely the first boss is actually probably the easiest thing in the first level. At about the halfway point I'd say this is. And I'm not taking my time. There is a time limit, although it's not really that tight to be honest. You pick up keys as well. It, it's not like it's... it's not a puzzle, it's just like a key to open up a door that's about five seconds away. Got a bit careless now. you really don't get much freedom have I mentioned the graphics yet? so there is noticeably quite a lot of parallax scrolling in the background and um, on the floor there and that's something that was actually pretty common in 16-bit games um, but actually it wasn't common on Amiga games and uh, that's down to basically the limitations of, um, of using the graphics modes that let you use more than one layer on the Amiga 
I think it limits the colours you can use to about 8 or something um, for one layer and then maybe 8 for the other. So what I think this game does to get around that um, to a certain extent is it it's changing the colours not of the the foreground but of the background it changes the colours as it's drawing them um, from top to bottom so you can see that the foreground there is mostly just red and green and Jim is quite colourful actually so I guess he's using um, hardware sprites uh, but the background is just like hundreds and hundreds of colours and uh, it actually does kind of get in the way a little bit right so this bit is a bit of a platforming puzzle it's all about timing though The music's very good. I think I've said that already. But the guy that did the music for this game is the same that did the music for the Turrican series. And um, this game Actually, I think the music's better in this than in the Turrican games, and it's a—I uh, mean, it's a very well-done game. It's just that it's almost like a, a European thing um, that it, it took a very long time for European developers to kind of catch up with um, everyone else when it came to design they were more interested in it seems to me anyway that they were more interested in sort of showing off their programming skills and uh, actually making the game come second well I got past that bit so on to the next level or actually maybe this is just um, the level 1 boss but unfortunately I ran out of lives so there you go that's a look at gym power I think I'll show off a little bit of um, one of the later levels as well after this So this is level 4, I think. And um, the game doesn't get any easier. Although I am playing this at the moment with infinite lives and um, time and infinite smart bombs but you can see there that there's just 
the screen is so busy and the enemies kind of share the same colours as the background or the foreground and uh, it makes them really hard to see and I don't think it's all that well known but there was first of all uh, this version and the Atari ST got a version and the Amstrad CPC got a version um, uh, the PC PC DOS got a version uh, the SNES got one that was uh, a little bit different uh, the PC Engine CD believe it or not and uh, actually the Mega Drive uh, got a version that wasn't published so uh, if you did watch then thank you very much <laughs>